Okay, I was going to talk about one thing, but now I need to talk about another thing. Because uh, it's another thing that I talk about all the time, but because it just now happened, I need to talk about it. Because I cannot be the only one who's going through this experience. There's no freaking way. <laughs> um, so, uh, conver a conversation. And I know it is because, like I've talked about before, it's what these people see they see their own their own um their own demons that's all they can see they can't see you or hear you or understand you or your perspective or anything it's very strange but um so uh in this situation this is will be just kind of a personal story uh, so in this situation, my, uh, we were talking about like, uh, things that the mom has had and then the daughter gets around the same age and I'm sure other people have noticed this stuff in their families, right? And, um, uh, so we were talking about that and, uh, then, um, uh, the conversation was about my one daughter who had her tonsils out. How old was she? Because her daughter just got hers out. And I think she's about to turn 11. And I can't remember. I think she, my, that my daughter was around 10. I think she was around the same age. But she could have been a little bit younger. But anyways, um, uh, I was just like, oh, that's a, uh, a bummer. Because, uh... I think that there's going to, oh, I know there's going to be medical break first, but, um, I said, I think that there's, uh, uh, you know, advanced, I think that in the naturopath thing that you can, um, like there would be certain things you could do that would help those symptoms because once you take something out, it starts giving you other problems that you wouldn't have, but now you've got the problems that cause this on top of what now you've just caused more problems by taking the part out but see it's part of their medical system but see because i've looked into it more and plus i my injury was through our medical community so um and uh, it's totally snowing it's so dark out uh, hold on let him out. Hold on. It's a big old snowstorm. They, and since it's still so dark, they think they can see their reflection in the window. <laughs> Barking at themselves. And they go outside. It's like... Where are they? Where are they? How do they get away? <laughs> okay. So, anyways, um, so knowing about what I've learned, you know, from the medical community and stuff like that, and going through my own experience is what even led me in that direction. When I started being able to see through the medical community and what woke me up in this whole thing when I saw the lies through the medical community. <laughs> So, uh, that's what, you know, got me to see, like, everything. You know, I already was having my spiritual awakening. I just hadn't seen the truth yet. There is nothing. It's probably someone walking. It's a total snowstorm, too. Oh, my eyes are killing me. Okay. So, anyways, uh, you know, so it, uh, it really gave me a, a huge perspective that, you know, now that I see so many other people don't have. And I started seeing how much people really do rely on that system. And they put all their faith and all their health into the medical community, which is built by that fella that is a rock. And you put it around, because I'm sure it's a name that would get stung. So you think about that, that's who started the Western medical. And, um, and uh, through the colleges and everything it has all, I mean, the licenses and stuff, you do what they say, just like what I was talking about yesterday with the protocols and stuff, you do what they say. 
are getting their license and look how much more control they've gotten more and more and more from the doctor you know almost from the shaman to the doctor who walked door to door you know go around your neighborhood and help you so you know they've gotten it so much about uh you know them and then and then, and then they're poisoning us so you know uh, they have to control the labs and what what kind of tests are done on us and all of that they, they have control over it all so anyways when when something happens to you with the medical like there's gonna be a lot more people <laughs> paying a lot closer attention real soon about what's going on with the medical community you know people just haven't seen it yet and i just i feel fortunate i feel really you know thank you thank you i mean it's been hard being an outcast, but also thank you for waking me to that earlier. You know, I would hate to have other kind of things that are gonna be going on for people. So yeah, I feel happy about knowing it, even though it's a hard fucking rocky dry road <laughs> being an outcast, uh, but you know, it's all good. Um, so anyways, back to the story. So. And I'm saying that, um, you know, since my own injury happened, I started looking more into this stuff, you know, like to me, smoking weed, it's not a drug. That is something that they did. They are the one who makes drugs. Weed is something natural that has got so many remedies and good things for people. And it does make you feel connected to more of who you are. I, I can hear a lot more clearly when they're talking than when, uh, when, when I smoke, I can hear so much more clearly. And a lot of people can, it puts you more into that kind of place where a lot of people have to go into meditation and stuff, but it just puts you into a more serene kind of place in your mind. That's why potheads always had kind of that bad rep of like, they're just kind of like, oh, they don't care, they're just laid back because they're kind of in a meditative state and you're kind of bothering them. <clears throat> because it's easy to go into a trance because it's part of what nature provides for us. And it has healing remedies, it has things for anxiety. I give it to freaking Stella for her pain. So, you know, it's got a lot of stuff that they hide from us so that they can dr push their drugs and chemicals. And, uh, but anyways, back on, I don't remember how I started with that thing. Oh, with the naturopath. So then going and looking more into that kind of thing where you start looking into like, or you start, it's not like as much looking into, I said that they'll bring me information. It's more just paying attention when information comes my way. Whereas before, when I was a nurse, you know, and I was, I thought like alternative medicine was just kind of like, like out there. And I think it was more like when I was studying about Buddhism and stuff like that, that's when I started seeing about Eastern medicine was different than Western medicine. And Eastern philosophy was different than Western philosophy. And uh, that's when I started understanding more about that. And um, so during that, it was like how everything, like I said, everything just kind of layers together in my life. It just, it just goes together. Like what they're trying to show me, teach me and have me learn. And it's my own frustration with the process that is the problem. And I still got to get back to that. Okay. So anyways, um, you know, when you start looking into the naturopath things, it starts showing you like, uh, even with the people I was watching on TikTok with the forager and stuff, we're constantly talking about the different uh, things in nature that are healing and stuff all the time. And um, so I was watching all those videos, but yeah, before when I was in there, so I thought that stuff was, you know, I just wasn't that interested. I was caught up in the rat race then, you know, I was just trying to make it and look good and all the bullshit. So, then uh getting to the um the part where it was that i was um looking into that also you know my interest has always been since i was a kid about the aliens because they were talking to me <laughs> they were telling me stuff in my head so you know and i knew i wasn't crazy i wasn't a crazy little kid there was people talking to me <laughs> so 
I was just listening to them and I had to be somewhere from out there because they were, that's what they were telling me stuff about. And, and they told me a lot of stuff. And so, you know, I always knew they were real. And I'm just, I couldn't understand why nobody else did. I couldn't understand why I was the only one who could hear things and knew things. And because that was a lonely road. <laughs> it was a lonely road. I've talked about it many times. It's been a lonely, deserty road for a lot of my life. <laughs> I've had some, I've had some, um, I, I would say passengers. That's the where they hear in my head, but it's not what I was picturing because I'm picturing. Uh, you know, like uh, back in the 70s, like Clint Eastwood movies, uh, my dad would like those desert cowboys and they're riding a long ways and they got the poncho on. That's what it feels like. And it, this is a long desert road. And sometimes someone's riding along with you and then they go and you're just back on that path alone again on that desert path. That's what I was picturing in my head. But, um, Anyways, that is, you know, what it does seem like in life. And I don't even know if that had, if I just went off on a weird thing, but that's what I do. <laughs> I go into these weird little trances and I just start seeing things. They just show me stuff and it's hard to stay present sometimes because, uh, you know, the more I was alone, the more that world became more and more real to me. And that all has happened simultaneously too. And, uh, but since my focus was always about aliens, uh, always anything about aliens I was drawn to, every single thing. And since my friend had seen Bigfoot at a young age, I was always interested in Bigfoot. And I, but I didn't put it all together until more when I was really listening to a lot about channelers, because I was trying to understand what was different, what was going on with me, what was going on with them. And that's when I figured out, oh, that's the same thing. They have the same thing as me. I see now like and that's when I started seeing like oh I'm the same as them and um, you know but that's one of the things when you go out and you start looking and you start listening to things that you wouldn't have typically listened to that's when you really do start finding parts of yourself that you didn't even know was like dormant parts of yourself are in there and they just get awoke and you start realizing more about who you are at your soul level not who you are at the surface level and you know the more depth to you as a soul and it is uh you know it's it's a scary kind of because it's like going down in the deep waters by yourself a lot of the time because it is it's an internal uh journey that is just you and it is like a, a deep sea and you do run into some freaking beasts in there i'll tell you uh, but it is it's all a journey from within and it's a connection that you find from within that connects you to all things outside because within with that whatever that whole thing is that's that's true and um i gotta get back to this thing what i was talking about that got me all in that i had to go on this story time okay so uh you know and i'm saying so that's my perspective right uh is oh the the alien stuff okay wait i went off Okay, so the, that they, um, in, when, you, when you're interested in that stuff, it leads you down the fake history. That's when you start looking, learning about the fake history. You start learning about the government corruption and the deals they made with the aliens. You start learning about the hidden technology. And, oh my God, and how advanced it is. And oh my God, the crazy stuff that they hide from us. And, and you start finding about the fake moon and fake moon landing. Like there's so, so freaking much that it starts leading to just going and being interested in aliens. I mean, it opens up a world of a conspiracy. It's like the X-Files world. And then once the CIA stuff and the FBI now have had to release all of their files, you go in and see like, oh, it was all true. Well, I don't need to go in and read those because I already had my internal knowing. I already knew it was all true. I just couldn't figure out why they were hiding it. But, uh, you know, it has so much to do with who we are, our um, bodies and uh, the chemicals and stuff that they poison us within the experiments they do on us and what they, because it's all about the energy. All they do is harvesting our energy. And, um, you know, and, make, and they make us struggle. They make it hard for us. Just these stupid freaking automated call things. How many times have I talked about that bullshit? 
That's just to make you frustrated. I'm gonna probably just rant for a while because I got nothing to do. TikTok's gone. <laughs> I'll just do a long rant. Now you guys will just have to listen to me more. Y'all have to pick and choose, but you won't listen to me rant about. Uh, okay, but I still got this story I'm trying to do. Okay, so, um, uh, so in the alien stuff, you start learning about that technology. And then once all this stuff started happening and so many different conspiracy groups started coming together, and I started learning so much more about disclosure and uh, so much more about, oh my gosh, I didn't even know there were so many different pockets of conspiracy theories. And, uh, you know, and they've all kind of merged together and figured out like, hey, we're not conspiracy theorists. This is all true and facts and we've seen the facts and they've all come together and unified like, oh, we've seen the truth. And everybody else is just like, oh my God, they're all crazy, but they, it's the tables have turned. They're the conspiracy theorists. You know, like they trust the freaking government. Like, what? How can you be that naive and gullible? So, you know, like Big Pharma, because like, they're not out to make money. They're out for your health. Um, anyway, so, uh, you know, and that's, you know, the perspective now that I'm coming. Like, I'm talking about all the time with these um, things and the other problems, whatever, that I have of the, um, the hope that I hold on to, I grasp for the med beds, you know? And I know it's coming, I, I know it is. Um, because it's, it's that important to me that I know that my guides wouldn't keep bringing me the information. If it was the other way, they would make that information drop away from me. And instead they keep bringing me more and more current stuff. They keep leading me towards that direction because they were always leading us a certain way. So yeah, I have a, a different perspective than most people. And since I'm crazy, that's all the people can see is crazy. And when I talk, that's all they hear is crazy. And since they think I'm now a racist, bigot, all these things that you know go along with certain words when you get lumped into certain labels, uh, all of those things, uh, that when I'm talking, that's all they hear. They can't, and so they're processing it to whatever I'm saying. They process it so it means what they need it to mean. So there's a lot of weird conversations that go on that I'm just, uh, I'm just burnt out on it. I just don't fucking care. Um, but, and this was, uh, <laughs> well, you don't, uh, you don't do that already. Don't do what? I, you aren't just in there being a naturopath. Oh, okay, yeah, I'm just learning about it, you know, I'm not saying I'm doing it. Well, then quit trying to pretend like you do. I'm like, I'm not trying to pretend like you do. Oh, quit trying to be, you're such a hypocrite. You just keep trying to pretend you're something that you're not. I'm like, I'm not trying to pretend I'm anything. I'm just saying I'm interested in it. I know it's, well, if you don't have all the truth, then don't talk about it. I was like, I'm... <laughs> I didn't keep a file to present a thing, but I've seen all the evidence that I need to direct me towards what I believe at this point. Uh, no, you're a fake and phony and a, a hypocrite. And I was just like, what? This is the weirdest world I've ever been in. I swear. I just, these experiences are just beyond... I, and it's got to be once I once I accepted myself, you know, because I think before I used to try and be a lot more conform into what other people thought I should be or something. Because I don't know, this is just it boggles my mind some of this stuff. Like, um, I you know, I was like, well, why do you spend so much time judging me and trying to figure out what I need to do different? I don't think, uh, what did she say? It's not what she does. I don't know, that's not what she does at all. She's not there trying to change me or tell me how to be different or what I need to do. I keep on thinking, I wonder why she, this is what my thing in my head, where I'm like, I wonder why she thinks like I need her to tell me what to do because like she doesn't, tr like I trust my guides, like, and I talk about that all the time. So why would I need you to tell me what to do? It's just weird, you know? Like, are you paying attention to me? Do you see me? Do you understand me? 
Do you hear me when I speak? Do you know anything that I talk about? It's just weird. Because you just live, it's like you already are a ghost sometimes in your life. You know? It's very isolating to, to see things that people can't see. It's, uh, yeah, you become kind of a loner. But remember I said, it, it already has always felt like that, kind of, that, um, I can see it so clearly. If you've never seen, like, um, uh, a Clint, uh, the old Clint Eastwood movies before he became Dirty Harry, uh, it was when he was the cowboy, as my dad. My dad had the, the poster of Raquel Welch. That's what I grew up with, Raquel Welch, and on our little wall of our house <laughs> as the cave woman. And I was my, like, oh, I gotta feel like Raquel Welch. And I was like this really skinny, uh, flat chested, no, no, no butt, no boobs. Now I've got the boobs, but I want to back off. I don't like them. I think they're heavy and under, uh, they're uncomfortable. I rather than like, I'm, I, feel, I feel like I'm more of a, some kind of, I've got some sort of DNA of some kind of animal that likes to be comfortable. But I gotta be, I gotta be lean. I know, I, like I said before, I need to fit through tight spots or something, I think. It feels like what, what my body is built for. Um, it's weird too, you know, because it, when you see this stuff, like you have no concept. It, I, I was thinking about this the other day, I was like, it's weird, because people have no concept. And uh, I've had people like see pictures of me before. And um, uh, when I was a kid, when I was younger, it was, I don't remember, I would hear this so many times that they would see a picture of me and then they would meet me and they'd go like, did you lose a lot of weight? <laughs> I'm like, no. Like, you, you haven't? Is this, <laughs> is this your, same, <laughs> your same body? <laughs> like, yeah, it is. I, said, I don't know what it is. I think we able to think in my, my head or something it makes it seem like my body maybe is real big but maybe i'm like one of those cute hip people i don't know <laughs> i don't know, I don't know. Uh, but it makes you think like especially because i was thinking about the difference in the size perspective like how we think that we are big but we're really small and something bigger comes in than we see but there's something bigger than that bigger than that there's always something smaller than that's because of micro macro and it shows you like we can look down and see how the things that are smaller than us live and know that that we are living like that as well until we take control until we become more conscious and conscientious and then we're just scurrying around like ants just like I was, I, my throat is so dry. Just like I was talking about yesterday when I was picking up on the energy when I was in town. It just, it felt so much like I was like in somebody's ant uh, hive or whatever. Those things I used to step in when I was a kid down south. Was, there were, uh, I think they were called ant hills. And they were these big hills with, um, just, and they were soft. And you couldn't tell, I swear. You know, if you would notice them, you wouldn't step in them. And they were everywhere. They were like, um, in how they show like in Vietnam how they had those bombs all over that's what that those ant hills were like you'd be running outside as a kid and we didn't I, well I was definitely like a little caveman child I never wore shoes and I had so many nails go through the bottoms of my feet oh my god I had so many foot trauma I stepped on bees I stepped on wasps I stepped in a million ant, uh, ant hills and those hurt like a bitch because they're not just one thing stinging you as you're running all of a sudden you just feel like your legs on fire and you look down and there's like a hundred ants on your legs just stinging the shit out of you. <laughs> uh, but uh, when you watch the ants and stuff, how they just like scurry around and they're so busy. Like I've watched ants before while I've just been outside and had nothing to do. And they're so interesting in how hard they'll work for one little fucking crumb to get it back to the game. And that's why I felt really bad when we used the poison stuff to because the when the ants came this summer you know and then we put it's uh, powdered sugar and cornstarch and then they take it back and the cornstarch blows them up or something it's horrible I don't want to think about that I don't like to end anyone's life oh and the other day uh, I was driving in the car and um, I was going someplace and the, this uh, what was I doing 
I'm sure I was driving. I don't know what the hell. Maybe I was in the parking lot. I was probably in the parking lot waiting and turning or something. I haven't been going places. But anyways, I lit a joint, right? And uh, spiders don't like that uh, smell or that density or that air or whatever. Like, if you do have a lot of spiders, just smell a lot of weed and they'll go away. Um, but they don't like it. And so it came wheeling down real quick. And I was like, and I, in that sense, I had my peripherals all fucked up. I was like, all of a sudden, something has to be like right there. And I was like, whoa, I didn't even see it coming. And then, um, so I turned and I saw it. And I saw it trying to scurry and it was trying to hurry. And it ran over and caught on the dash and was trying to hide. It was going down and was hiding. But when it was walking, it was so cute because it it kind of looked like a little bulldog. It was like, boop, 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 boop. It was really cute. And he went and he hid and he scurried down in there. And I thought, oh, must have been this. He must have been right out by my head. And then when I lit that, he was like, fuck, what the hell? <laughs> he goes running. Uh, and he goes running to hide. And, uh, but I felt so bad because then the next day we had to go to the train thing. And they got in the car and right away, so oh, it's a spider. <laughs> I was like, oh, he had a good life. He did have a good life. That's why I just gotta be like, him. he knew it was, he knew it was not perfect. <laughs> Like I sound forked. Oh god. I I don't know. I think I definitely see why people think I'm mentally ill in this um, reality. Even when she'll be like, "Oh my god, what do you always have to talk about?" Blah 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 or blah blah blah. That's how I think. I'm like, that's the reality I'm in. I'm thinking about different things. I'm not in this reality. Like, I've left it. And people don't understand it until they've left it. Doesn't make any sense until you leave it. Um, but there was still, besides this story. But anyway, I think you get what I'm saying in the story. You know, we, uh, you just, things are not going to make sense. Conversations are not going to make sense. People are not going to see you for who you are. They're only seeing, uh, they're only seeing them. I don't even know. There is their own self because that's all life is is showing you yourself and it is like when you finally see yourself and you finally heal that aspect of yourself it's a fucking gift because that is what you get to the part where you start really rebuilding yourself and everything starts becoming super acutely aware to you of what's really broken and how your relationship was with it and how to redefine yourself, you know? It's all part of this process, but it's it's happening at different paces for everybody. So, you know, it's, um, but th that is also part of your lessons, you know, because it is part of um, ego work and stuff. Because for me, it's a lot like, you know, how is it? Like, why can't I get through to my own children? Like, that's a lot to break down, a lot. And anybody else, any other mom going through something like that. I mean, I've heard a lot of spouses, a lot of um, siblings talk about it. But I don't want it's your own kids. I don't think you're, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's just, it's like, how, didn't they get you to question things more? Didn't they get you to look at things? Like, didn't they get you to, like, not feel like bullying was okay? Like, there's so many things where it's just like you start really questioning. <laughs> so there's a lot to look at for us all, all the time. And that is what we gotta think of, you know, because it's really easy to get caught up in judging others and focusing on other people's stuff. When, you know, every single thing is only there for us our own selves to learn just like okay I'll just keep going on this one just like so um yesterday when they were saying or when I was talking about uh, uh emotions and and getting and that stuff I've gotten from alien stuff and then just being interested in psychology and even at my last job I was a psych nurse and um in the medical and in the corruption you just start putting things together everything just starts layering and making a more complete picture to me but um so uh with the emotions it's it, it, i do believe it is up to us to um 
you know, get our emotions in check. Even yesterday, I heard other random thing. I, I was probably, no, it must have been on TikTok before I got kicked off. Uh, it must, so it must have been in the morning I heard it. But it was somebody, um, and they were saying, oh, let me see if I can picture it again. I saw it a second ago. Um... Just like my memory just faded out for a second. Well, I mean, it fades in and out all the time. It's like Swiss cheese. Like, it's hard for me to have. This is what they told me at the thing. Like, all of whatever memories went. Less, luckily, I could remember some functions. Uh, but I can't remember, like, doing something. Like, even if I do something this every day, I have to remember how to do it each time. <clears throat> Like I have to try and figure it out and like doing my blender and stuff like that. So just steps like that. I have to like re relearn or something. We try and figure out each time, like the first time. <laughs> so it's frustrating. Um, but the uh, memory part, it was like a huge sweep and through. Like just like if you had a bunch of stuff on your house and you sweep it and there's some stuff left on the floor. That's more like what was left of my memory. And then my uh, making new memories is affected. And the only way that a new memory can be made is if it when it sweeps, like just in, when it goes through, um, it has to attach to something that was already there. And um, But a lot of the stuff that I'm getting that is not where I have to worry about that so much anymore because it's communication. It's just them me tell, telling me stuff and then me translating it. And that's why sometimes like they'll just, uh, they'll tell me stuff and then I'll forget them. They'll uh, tell me because sometimes I'll block it myself because I'll get in my own way where I'll think like, oh my God, I can't remember. I have a brain injury. How am I going to know? And then I've got to remember like, shut up they're telling you you don't have to try and remember they'll just tell you again so sometimes i have to go through that process <clears throat> but my memory that is what kind of happened so um but anyways i do get in my own way when i'm believe me i don't know all this shit like i, I tell stuff that i'm hearing for the first time like uh, sometimes the stuff that uh you know, I, I, I'll just, I told you that they'll tell me stuff and I'll just find it so fascinating. And then, um, even if I start talking about something that they'll tell me, they'll tell the same new stuff in my head that I'll find fascinating, but it's just perspective. You know, that's the whole thing. It's just opening yourself up to more perspective and more understanding. That's all it is. Hold on again. Sorry. snowstorm we're under snow storm advisement warning or whatever it is i was expecting 12 inches and it's been dark here for fucking weeks um but anyways uh, uh you know that's the briefing on how that is how my mind works with uh so anyways yesterday when i was talking about the emotional um you know how to keep your emotions in check and it's important i've just have had that come in a lot of different ways to me and i do think it's true and um so oh the t okay so uh the uh the tiktok person there you go i gotta see it again um so when they uh so getting your emotions in check. Oh, there was one that I saw. Was that the one? Oh, that was on the initiation episode where he was showing the, um, he was showing the, like the different dimensions and how it works energetically and how the third dimension is used to feed the, like the fourth dimension 
feeds off of the three, third dimension and they create chaos and stuff like that. And um, uh, so other beings can make deals with these beings. Oh my gosh. <laughs> some days it's just like, and especially sometimes when I'm trying to talk about something that I think it, it's, uh, that energy comes in like to cause chaos. So anyways, the, um, that they uh, feed off of the different people, but that's not the TikTok that I keep seeing in my head, but I got to get it more clearly. But um, so energetically how they feed off of people and, you know, if people understood that about how important it is. Oh, oh, yeah, it was a girl and she went to uh, Astral Project and she was in an astral projection and she said that the beings that were in there said, oh my gosh, uh, what are you doing over here? Uh, humans aren't supposed to be in here. And um, she said that, they said, uh, humans are so dramatic. And that, see, I think that was really making me think like uh, about that a lot yesterday. <laughs> I'll tell you why. Because when I was talking about the emotional thing and how we need to work on getting our emotions in check and how it helps us for our own spirituality to pull it in. You know, my daughter was just going through that like why she was waiting for our LSAT re results. It's like, why are you stressing out? The results are already done. Like, there's nothing you can do to change it. And it's going to be a learning experience no matter what it is. But, you know, you get, and everybody does this. I'm just using that as an example, but we get our emotions all worked up. It's like, why do we do that? I mean, it's been part of our training here, but you know, this is part of the, like, we need to look at it, recognize it so we can stop doing it. You know, we have to recognize it. And then it's kind of the process, you know, we don't just jump in and perfect and oh, look, I can do it all and I'm perfect. Oh. No, and we can talk still about it and still trying to help one another and you know that's okay um but anyway so the trying to get our emotions in check you know is uh well if it stops feeding this you know they have to move on and go find some other thing to feed them uh but all of that whole process is ending right now because this consciousness is awakening to what it is and that's what has to happen to break free from this whole system. It's not just an enslavement to the aristocrats, it's an enslavement to an entire, uh, like what I was saying before, it is like a whole process in the consciousness, uh, like where these different people showed us, stepping up different dimensions. It's a different understanding of perception of reality and life. And it's in the consciousness's process of that awareness that, you know, puts them into that higher kind of, um, you know, the way to start growing and, you know, moving out of this kind of stuff, you know, uh, moving out of, like, if you have the awareness that something's feeding off of you, you're going to just sit there and mope and whine and cry. You can freaking get your shit together. You know, it's like, fuck you. You're not eating all for me today. <laughs> That's, and I do that. I, I seriously do. I talk to them like that. I'm like, fuck off. <laughs> no, I'm getting my shit together, so fuck off. Um, so, you know, when I was talking about that, you know, I'm really saying it. And, you know, what I really do think and how I really do try and live my own life. And, um... So it was like a quick little test yesterday, right? It was a TikTok. It had become a big part of what I would do during the day. I focused a lot on it, you know. It took a lot to to um, tape the shows that I was taping, and then to download them, and then to uh, you know go in and make my own videos and talk about the show or whatever, you know. And a lot of times the other day I would like little affirmations and put those on. So it ended, I would end up being like six or eight hours. I swear to God, that was spent trying to work on that building that community there that it was you know a lot of people were coming together it was going up hundreds of followers a day it was already within whatever three or four months it was already up to 15,100 and the uh the likes thing was going up really really fast 
that was going up uh, like thousands a day. It was uh, over 70,000. It, it went from 63,000 to 70,000 in just a couple of days. So it was growing really fast, you know, when a lot of people were going in and talking to each other and asking questions. And so it was really, it was building a community a lot faster than this thing. Oh my gosh, this is slow, but I haven't known the whole time that Lone Shadow, I mean, I get told that by other people. I didn't even know what shadow banning was, so I started having people telling me, you know, your shadow bans, your shadow ban. And then you start being like, oh, what is that? I, I still don't understand it fully. I don't understand how they can like hide stuff about me, like why I don't get to go into the mix or something, I don't know. But um, losing that really put me into a, a, a thing, as an emotional roller coaster kind of feeling, you know, because you have your, your logic, you have your, you know, your guidance talking to you and then you have your emotions to deal with and then you have like your ego it likes to peek up a little all the time it always likes to find that little spot like don't forget about me <laughs> i'm still at the party you always gotta keep that little motherfucker in check um so you know all of that those kind of different things coming up and then uh so i had to go through the process of you know, and I was like, okay, so I'm going through this. So I'm going to kind of share like how I actually was doing it. It may not even work for you or whatever, but it may kind of just give somebody an idea like, oh, you, you know, because maybe I'm saying it wrong or something. I don't know. But so for me, you know, I got the bad news and then suddenly this big, uh, you know, kick in the, in the face. Plus my guidance, uh, you know, tells me different things to do and then when I go do them and it's like I said they lead me on a path all the time and I'm always paying attention to them because now I'm way more tuned into them than tuned into this world place they or this place I don't know what you want to call it I don't even know what to call it anymore I can call it hell <laughs> instead of being tuned into hell I'm tuned into something different so um you know having to go and um uh, it was a it was a huge distraction too, but it also gave you like a feeling of uh, doing something that felt good, like you were doing something that was helpful and building a community. You know, it made sense. Like it's like okay, I get it. You tell me to do this, and oh my gosh, this is so exciting. You know, it's growing, and um, y you start getting like caught up in it or something, and uh, you know, it's exciting. And so then when it's just all of a sudden, boom, just instantly gone. Instantly. But there was warnings because my daughter, or my phone all of a sudden became full. It was really messy. I was videotaping and all of a sudden a thing came across and I was like, oh, you can't videotape anything else. Your iCloud's full. I, my iCloud's been full so many times. I'm on the highest, well, I'm sure there's a higher one. You always kind of, <laughs> you always find me a higher one. I'm at the $10 a month one now for iCloud. Uh, and my phone, so it came across that it was full, and when it did, I had to go in and start deleting video. I, I didn't know it could get full like that. It was freaking full of shit, and so I kept deleting stuff, and it wasn't going down, and I was trying to delete apps. It was like a huge process, especially, uh, this is one of those things for a brain injury person. This technology bullshit is like, oh, it just spins my head out. Uh, it's just like my brain doesn't want to just keep going in circles, 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 circles. That's all this shit is. And uh, especially if you don't know what you're doing. And uh, so anyways, getting to the, um, um, get back to where I was. Um, so I was having all of the, um, those different things that were, there was a bunch of different things that were happening. Uh, for those days, but on that one, the one, oh my god, it was just like every day was some other fucking thing. It would be hours. I was like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> but the the one with the full storage that was taking, oh my god, it was taking so long. And then I got to um, the, uh, I then I saw that TikTok took up a lot of space. And it was all of these videos, but I said, I gotta save them because TikTok could take me down at any moment. <laughs> I was like 48 hours later, boom, 
you're gone, bitch. <laughs> There's no warning. Well, they gave me warnings, you know. You can't share flood videos. You can't share mustache man videos. It wasn't even a full one. Like, I mean, it was a whole, it was like a three minute video. And that was in those couple of words, the N word and the F word, uh, to go along with mustache man. That, uh, he was in it for like what 10 seconds and there's a boom fuck the, no we cannot have those comparisons <laughs> oh i saw that i saw people on the streets asking people if they knew what the holocaust was didn't if they knew who the guy was uh -oh. i saw a tiktok girl where she was like someone asked her if she knew uh who was and she's oh my god her response oh. and it was somebody respond it was somebody showing their response to her because she thought maybe it was a new band and it sounded really cool she really liked the name and oh, it's like it was like oh god oh ignorance ignorance is i guess it's bliss until you find out about it and it's like horror but you know you gotta see the other side and that's what's about to go down so anyways on the emotional thing so when that happened I was, um, you know, I was just, it was something taken away from you that, that you didn't have control over, but there was those little bit of warnings, um, because I had also seen a TikTok, you know, I think I already said about the guy saying that TikTok's going to go down, and, um, so I was already being kind of warned, and so then, I mean, like, the universe was kind of warning me. Like, pay attention, TikTok. And now my phone is like half back over. Like, it, it, I can't believe how much TikTok took up of my storage. Um, but anyways, so um, I was having just a lot of different emotions about it. And then anybody I said anything to, you know, well, you shouldn't be so radical. You shouldn't be so, you know, you've really have gone kind of in a more radical like uh you know you're a white supremacist and well you know you probably shouldn't follow that <laughs> yeah that's the that's the kind of like oh my god something that was important to me that i worked hours and hours on a day that i was i, I you know felt good about i was having fun doing it you know <laughs> But, so there was a lot of different emotions, a lot of different things going on, you know, it was just like, boom, 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 boom. And I was getting hit by things I wouldn't have, you know, been thinking. And I mean, don't, oh, don't get me wrong, there was some tears shut. <laughs> I don't, I'm not trying to be perfect or anything. I'm never ever trying to be perfect. Yeah, there was tears shed for sure. Uh, and I was, you know, feeling down and feeling like, you know, why, why would they tell me to start that? And then have it just taken away like this? You know, but I heard loud and clear, uh, just because we told you to start something didn't mean we were you were gonna do it forever. You know, there's an end to everything and that was the end of that. And that's not where we want you now. That's not the direction that we're having you go. So, you know, they're telling me that, but I you know, you know what I'm saying back to them, it's like, you don't know how bad this hurts. You just don't understand. You know. I'm like, you guys better learn. Uh, if this is, uh, you know, I try and give them uh, insight into emotion. <laughs> it's not that easy. It's not that easy to get, you know, uh, it's a whole process inside of us. And it's uh, difficult. And um, so when I was going through the whole thing, you know, I, I, I did think about, you know, and I told them, you know, you're not feeding off me today. <laughs> I'm getting a grip here. <laughs> so, uh, you know, and that's what it... That's what it's about, like, take the other world as real as this world, because it is as real as this world. It's more real than this world. This world is an illusion, because you think you are living something that you're not really living. But, you know, uh, the beings around you are real, so, you know, you can just, like, punch them out, the hell away. Uh, but it's not like beings like what we imagine either. It's like a much more of an energetic kind of, uh, but you pull in, you know, magnetize in certain things, and that feeds energy back, you know, 
negative or whatever, however it works. Uh, I'm gonna ask a scientist. I'd say it wrong, that's for sure. Um, but so it was a process all day of just doing that kind of thing. And I used a lot of affirmations, a lot of listening, a lot of uh, what people would consider meditation. I even felt kind of desperate at one point, you know, because I told you they give me communication all the time. They have a certain place on a YouTube thing and uh, it will always be in the first box when they, uh, their communication. And it's crazy. I'm not even kidding. I mean, it could sound crazy to you, but it's crazy to me because I can ask questions and that will answer. So <laughs> I know it's communication with my TV, with something. <laughs> I don't know. Something's communicating with me. So um, I think it's a universal energy that I've tapped into, but, you know, could be AI. I don't fucking know. <laughs> remains to be seen. A lot remains to be seen. So, um, you know, I was... A lot of um, you know self-talk and uh, all of that stuff that uh, I felt so desperate you know like oh just please tell me make this make sense <laughs> you know and they're telling me like in my head they're like calm down God, relax I'm like you don't understand <laughs> and um, so I put up the thing, you can at least just give me something, give me something solid. I need a solid answer. <laughs> and then um, the thing was, <laughs> uh, the thing was, oh, I see, I got tears in my eyes. Uh, meditation. <laughs> I said, relax. <laughs> so, you know, I'm like, okay, I hear you loud and clear. And uh, so it was a lot of that. Uh, okay. You gotta remember when something ends, it wasn't always meant to keep going. Things are not meant to be permanent or forever. We're not even permanent or forever. So, you know, that's an important thing that we need to keep in mind when things are ending because it hurts. It's painful. It's still painful today. It was, you know, you give birth to something, you create something, you give birth to it, you give birth to its whole life. It's the same thing with giving birth to a child. You give birth to an idea. You give birth to, a, you know, a, a program or whatever, you know, whatever it is that you're birthing, that you are giving life to, that you're creating. You know, when it ends, it could be a relationship. You, you know, it could be anything, an idea of self. But when it ends, it hurts. And that's going to be a lot for a lot of people, the idea of self, the ending of idea of self. That is what is, it's not just a dark night. You can go through the dark night and still not have the ending of self. The ending of self is the birth of the new self. And that is what I believe that baptism represents and what Jesus talked about and stuff. Because I believe that is what the path to enlightenment is all about. You really do rebirth yourself. And it's so crazy when you're around somebody who keeps telling you you're the same person. But luckily, I have other people in my life who say, like, no, you're nothing. You're not at all. And that's when, like, I start seeing, oh, there's being stuck in time is part of the process. You can be stuck, stuck in time. Yeah. So <clears throat> don't get stuck in time. You don't want to get stuck in time. Ooh. Uh, and you try and hold others there with you. It's like nobody wants to be there with you. People let go of that. You, it's time for you to. But, you know, everybody's got their own process. You know, we all have to be patient with one another. And that, if we can't be patient, then that's something in us that we need to work on. And if we feel like we need to judge their process, then that's something in us that we need to work on. So it always comes back to us. Once you open up that door, <laughs> everything comes back to, you know, your responsibility, your reality, your perspective, your whatever's going on is up to you to see differently. It's up to you to learn from, you know. A lot rests on your shoulders. Everybody's waiting for a savior, but uh, you're the savior for yourself. So um, anyways, then, you know, besides that, that, you know, being willing to let go of things and be willing to, uh, when things, when one thing closes, you know, it opens up the path to new things. And, uh, you know, and always keep in mind that, you know, that these things happen constantly and it's for our best. 
even though sometimes it's lessons and things that seem hard and things that seem like, how is this for my best? It's in the hindsight. It's after you've processed it, after you've gone through it and you see, that's when you're like, oh, I see. It could be another situation that comes up. You're like, oh, hell no. I know this situation. I already know this situation because you learned it. So there's a lot of different reasons why you go through things. And, you know, it is your own soul's journey. It is your own soul's making. It's your own soul's doing. <laughs> it's you. It's you being you. How, whatever is going on with you. You know, maybe you have a big old ego and you took on way too much. I don't know. But, you know, you got to get yourself through it because you're the only one who can. But, uh, in, you know, just do a lot of that. I, I use that self-talk and affirmations a lot. Just get instead of before you know when you're in a dark state you get the negative broken record that won't shut the fuck up all you gotta do is take off that one and put on a new 45 that just says sweet little tender things to you all day just repeat it over and over and over and over and over shut out the noise shut out the negative thoughts and it will help you control your emotions <clears throat> because the more you feed that the more you feed those emotions so if you get in that negative self-talk, you know, just get yourself down. Like everything is just brings you down, 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 down. So you, it's up to you to change that record. And before people, I had heard that in several different ways, different times, like while I was depressed and stuff, where the doctor said, you know, you got to think of it like a doorknob. You got to turn the doorknob and go in a different door. And I could not get it. Like what? What? And then um, I heard a counselor before say about change the record. And it was just like, you know, like you can hear the words, but it doesn't make sense. Just like before when I heard, let go, let God, let go, let God. And it, it was just like a slogan. And all of a sudden one day it was just like, oh, just let go. Let go and let God. It's like, it's just like, let go of things. Like, why are we trying to make things be? Why are we trying to make things happen? Things are happening for us, happening to us. We just have to be present in the moment and in the experience. And that is what life is all about. But we're always trying to control it. We're always trying to, you know, uh, control others to make our existence, you know, livable for us. And, uh, you know, this, this whole thing, though, is a huge process that we're going to be expanding out of. So... It is, um, you know, going to be a lot, uh, a lot more uh, productive, a lot more. I, I mean, there's a reason why as people wake up, they become more unified. And the people who are getting more and more sunk into that are more and more <clears throat> angry and <clears throat> judgy and blamey and all of that, you know. Uh, but you know, it's, it's like, it is like Red Rover, Red Rover. You can keep calling and calling and calling them. And, you know, it's up to the person to decide, like, it is. Which side do I want to be on? And when do you start noticing, man, the side I'm on is kind of bitches. They're kind of negative. Kind of judgy. I don't feel too good on this side. Because <clears throat> when you get over the other side, it's all about like, you know, just sharing information. It's just like, hey, you do you, and I'll be me. And, you know, it's just seeing life in the world in a whole new way. But each person, and, you know, it's, it is like the, the um, yellow brick road, too. It is like that desert path for some people not for everybody but definitely the uh, road to awakening is a deserty path rocky you, lose, you start losing a lot of friends a lot of family you start losing a lot of people because you begin to question things you begin to see things differently and they haven't seen things differently yet it remains to be seen what's gonna happen I don't know we'll just have to see but anyways I'm not gonna just uh, abuse you guys now with my loss of time. I do have my socks I'm working on. I'm gonna just really get onto the sock thing. I spent two days trying to undo this one thing of yarn that I thought was gonna be some cool like 
wooly on his socks. And then um, it just kept breaking. And I spent two days trying to undo that ball. So I'm two days behind. But I finished uh, one. Let's see, they're, they're just like the kind of socks you, you, you can make them bigger and be a hat. But they're like cabin socks. You just, you, I put them over my other socks because then um, it keeps your feet warm. It keeps like, I don't like to, I like to have socks on all the time. I don't like to, I have them dogs. It's always like little pebbles, little dust. Little, I mean, I, you have to go crazy, neurotic, crazy, sweeping all, all day long. Uh, you know, I don't have time for that. <laughs> Ain't nobody got time for that. So anyways, I'm not gonna just uh, make you guys have to suffer and listen to me <laughs> an hour or two a day. Uh, you know, you may just have to break it up in bits. I don't know. So anyways, have a great day. And, you know, remember to just, just stay centered, you know, and that's the only place you can keep going. Even when life keeps pulling you in different directions, just remember you have a center. Just keep coming back to your own center. What makes sense to you? how to keep yourself sane. And you have to try different things to figure out what makes you sane, you know? Uh, does br doing breathing techniques, does time alone. I like taking baths. Um, you know, everybody has different things to unplug and regroup and, you know, find your center, reconnect. So that's uh, when things get rough, you just gotta keep on coming back to self, coming back to center. And things are going to keep being rough, man. Some of the things where you start hearing these different... That was one thing on TikTok. There was lots and lots of channelers. Lots of people sharing their information. And I don't... You know, I I don't... I, I talk about... Uh, like... I don't know. I, I feel like... Some, there's lots of people who talk about stuff I talk about too. Like the ways we can have our society be and how to heal and stuff like that. But there's lots of people who are channeling, like, what's going to happen? I, I, you know, I've said before, like, I, I, I have listened to some of them before, but I just, I don't believe in dates and time like that. And so I think it's more like energies and it's hard to pinpoint how things are going to go down. Like right now, I'm still thinking the problem is going to be real significant over what's going to be happening. Today is the fourth. It's the day that they've been warning us about for <clears throat> so many different people, but I've seen so many different channelers saying, uh, oh, and uh, astrology people, too. If you want to go watch some different astrology people and see what they're saying, it just seems like, man, this is just going to keep going like this for a while. I don't know. We'll see. I, um, oh, today I watched um, like one of those five minute inspired, and I love the native ones. And I see it, there's certain words that just, I don't like their words. Uh, but all their words are stupid. The, the people, the beginning, the, the original people, the people who are more, you know, part of the planet, the, um, uh, their prophecy and stuff. And he said, everything has happened to already to get to the part where we're about to have it's the same thing as a solar flash that is said by so many things, so many QHHT people, so many people with their dreams, so many channelers, so many people. Yeah, uh, the Book of One talks about it. Like everything talks about the solar flash that's going to happen. And uh, who knows? You know, is La Palma going to fucking blow? And, you know, it's going to, you know, is the sun going to blow? And create? I mean, I don't know. But there's supposed to be some really big stuff that's going to be happening. Um. Uh, you know, so I'll just wait and see and just remember uh, everything that happens is meant to happen. It, you're eternal. There's nothing to fear. Uh, this is just part of what you chose to experience this in, this, this transition, how you chose to experience it for your own awakening, for your own growth. There's certain things that you are learning and growing from it that may not make sense. But anyway, anyways, uh, we've all chose this experience <laughs> as much as it doesn't make sense sometimes, as much as you question, like, why, why would I put myself through this? I love myself. Why would I do this? Yeah, sometimes things just don't make sense. At some point, everything will make sense. You just got to wait for that point. 
just remember, no matter what happens, just keep centered, you know, work on the things that you've discovered about yourself that keep you whole and safe and, uh, you know, work on your nutrition and taking good care of yourself and stay active, even if it's in your house, walking to the bathroom 50 times a day, just stay active doing something, you know, use your pan to pick up, fill it with water, use it as a little weight, just sit here in your chair, it really will. I, I don't, I've never done it before, but it really would. You would put something in a pan with the two handles, it would strengthen your whole core, even just sitting in your chair and you only have to do it, like keep it by your thing. Do it a couple times a day, put a couple books in the pan. You know, you can create, when you start looking around your house, you can create your own workout. You don't need to go to a gym. You don't need, uh, and you can get a lot more um, healthy and stuff, cooking a lot more for yourself, not using any processed food whatsoever. The more, and it, it just sucks because, you know, all of our vegetables, everything is fucked with at this point and full of chemicals. So the more cleanest food you can get the, is the better. <clears throat> you know, the less ingredients is the better. You know, I've heard that forever, but now it makes a lot of sense. <laughs> everything starts making sense at some point, and everything's going to start making sense to a lot of people at some point. They just haven't been affected yet. So it's going to get darker until it gets light. So have a great day, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Be guaranteed. If I've got power, I will be talking to you tomorrow. Talk to you later. Bye.